rain. See, I just said, don't blame the rain. No, I'm kidding. Uh, do what? No, you're good. You're good. It does feel something's off, and it's the rain. I blame the rain. Uh, but um, I just said, don't blame the rain, and I'm blaming the rain. Uh, but um, I blame my, my allergies. <laughs> uh, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, one of my favorite chapters, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, the Hall of Faith, Hall of Faith. And anybody ever heard a sermon out of this chapter before? <laughs> of course you have. Uh, you've probably preached some in Sunday school lessons. You've taught some, and uh, you've probably read it, and you have verses that you've quoted out of it. Uh, but I love Hebrews chapter 11. It's one of my uh, favorite chapters in the Bible. Um, I and my family, we're in our church we have learned um, a lot of lessons in the last <coughs> 10 years, 11 years. Uh, when dad moved here, when our family moved here from, where do we move here from? Chicago? Hobart. Hobart. So Chicago. You don't say, where are you from? I'm from Hobart. People don't know where that is. You say, I'm from Chicago, because Hobart's like right by Chicago. And people are like, oh, I know where that is. Uh, so Chicago, uh, just outside of it. And, of course, um, Chico, California for a minute, and Indianapolis. Um, but um, when we moved here from Hobart, and Dad left his drywall company and uh, <laughs> graduated from school and, and all that, and uh, we, we moved here in 1994, uh, it was evident that God had called him here. Uh, it was a city that needed a church. It was a city that uh, apparently wanted a church. Uh, by the, by the, the speed of which we grew, um, this is our third building. Our first building is right behind Glenbrook Mall, right between what now is Saboya's Mexican Restaurant and Wisman's Appliance, which Wisman's Appliance has been year before, was there before we got there. Um, and uh, right in between that, I believe it's um, Fire Dogs Restoration Company is ran out of there now. Um, but I think when we moved there, it was um, Ted Nugent Bow and Arrow Surplus or something. So we, you know, running joke, we called it the Ted Nugent Tabernacle, or Tabernacle. Had some fun with it. Uh, but, of course, we changed out the sign, and we started running a bus right from there, and uh, it just began to grow a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then by the time we moved over to 3218 North Clinton, which is now just a, a grassy field, um, they leveled it. <coughs> um, when we moved out of there, we outgrew it, and we had an ultimatum, buy the property or move out because Calvary Temple, we leased it from them. Um, we didn't want to buy it because of the expense that needed to go into digging out the fuel tanks out of the ground because it was an old gas station uh, or something, that ex something to that extent. Uh, but that building's gone, and here we are in this one, and we've been in this one since 2001. So we've been in it for 21 years. And uh, this is where we really began to hit our stride. Six bus routes. Um, Christian school with a, what, K-4 through 12, volleyball team, basketball team, traveling. Uh, we went to every conference. We went to every camp. We went to every, I mean, you talk about a place of activity. Um, I don't lament it. A lot of people get burnout on it. I'm so sick and tired of hearing pastors, kids boo-hoo and cry their big alligator tears of Everybody feels sorry for them. But to whom much is given, much is expected, much is required. And you got to revel in the fact that not just Jackson's, but we were here to unlock the building. And we were here. We were the first ones on and the last ones off. We were the first ones in and the last ones out. Um, and I don't say that as Jackson's, but and that was anybody who tagged along. That was like, oh, we're in it with you. We will show up at 4 o'clock in the morning to shovel the parking lot if the plow truck breaks down. Uh, and those people existed. And those people showed up. So I'm talking all the hard work and all the things. So we're running consistently 320, 330, and then big days of whatever, 500 and, and whatnot. And, and it just the, what a church is. What a church is. Um, 
and the lessons that have had to be learned throughout the years when you see those numbers go down, 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 when you see your pastor fall by the wayside, when you see your pastor get sick and it almost seems unexplainable and it almost seems like, come on, man, this is not real. This is like Job's friends. You sit around Job and they accuse Job to himself and um, all the different facets. I could go on just about the circumstances that surrounded that. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of people just fell out, you know, just the, the leader's not there. The, the sh- smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Um, but I never read, and this is what shocked me, because I never heard this one before. But sh- smite the shepherd and the wolves in sheep's clothing take off the sheep's clothing. And I... Th- Guarantee we had some. There were some wolves among us. And the devil used them to try to tear this place apart. Um, Not through um, scandal, but through opportunity. Because we are a soul winning, baptizing, evangelizing, Baptist distinctives back there on this is biblical authority, Bible believing, Bible obeying. Christ honoring, God glorifying Baptist church who came to Fort Wayne to punch that stupid old devil in his nose. And the devil didn't like that. They call Fort Wayne the city of churches. Well, why is Fort Wayne in the condition that it's in? It's it's the city of buildings with the name church on it, but it is not the city of churches. Because for a church, you need a pastor. And I run into very, 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 very few pastors here in Fort Wayne. Very few people have ever come and knock on my door to tell me about Jesus from the so-called city of churches. But I can tell you how many tens of thousands of doors our church has knocked on alone. Alone. So, wow, man, we're doing the Lord's work. And the devil was like, oh, yeah, you can punch. But guess what? I can punch back, too. The devil doesn't curl up on a ball and go, oh, poor me. The three years Baptist church people are hurt. No. He fights back. And he does all that he can. Does everything he can to break you, to get you to quit, to tell you don't, to tell you to throw in the towel. What he's trying to do is get you to break, to throw in your faith. A throwaway faith. And that's what a lot of Christians have these days. And that's not from a judgmental standpoint. It's from a, I've lived it standpoint. It's from a standpoint of how long do I have to endure until my faith makes me whole? Until my faith comes out for me? Until my, so all this comes out in the wash and it, and, and, and my expectancy happens. How long do I have to hold out on this faith thing? Well, I'm going to tell you this morning, you cannot live. You cannot live. The Bible says you cannot live the Christian life apart from faith. It's not I live the Christian life, you know, as an ingredient, faith as an ingredient. No, faith. Faith is its main ingredient. Faith is what got you saved. Faith is what got the blood to cover you. Faith is what's taking you to heaven when you die. It's faith. See, but when a lot of people get saved, oh, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to save me from my sin. Okay, but now you got to take that same saving faith and apply it to life-changing faith. Life-changing faith. Because a changed life is evidence of salvation. I know all kinds of people who are saved, and if I were to see them on the street, they, I would say they weren't saved. Why? Because you shall know them by their fruit. And I can look at their fruit and go, they're kind of fruity. I can say, and, and so, hey, hey, and some of them are. Some of them are. When you say, I have faith to get saved, but not enough faith to give my life to Jesus, don't be so far, it's not so far-fetched that a straight dude can go crooked just like that. Same, vice versa for a female. Same thing with somebody who's, who's as clean as possible can turn into drugs. 
Just because you're saved doesn't mean you don't ever do, doesn't mean you can't ever use drugs and doesn't mean you can't ever go, you know, your gate swinging both ways. Doesn't mean you can't ever have hatred in your heart. It's not some hedge about you to make you impervious to sin. No, it makes you salvaged and redeemed from dying to go to hell. But the Bible says, be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Well, how do you renew your mind? The word of God. You see, the Bible isn't some just some centerpiece on the coffee table. It should be the centerpiece for your heart. The centerpiece of everything. Churches that gather to church and they don't open up the Bible to preach, but the pastor gets up there and talks about some culturally relevant garbage. Open up the book and say, this is what the book says. Every father, every mother, and every kid that knows how to read should open up the Bible and say, what does God have to tell me today? I was holding a deacon, our youngest. He's five months old. Uh, we have our church's first deacon. We have, um, uh, uh, I had a uh, deacon, our son, and I was holding him. And he doesn't understand his thing. I said, he's teething, so he's got a little bit, I think he's teething, and he's got a fever. And um, uh, I was holding him, and he's looking at me. I was, like, I was like, you know what I did today? Do you know what? And you're like, you're talking to your five-year-old mom. He doesn't understand you. Like, I don't care. I looked at him. I said, I talked to God today. Like how many people get up in the morning and you talk to God? I was talking to a Catholic friend on the phone about some insurance. And uh, I'll keep reverting back to this until I get this guy saved. But he said, it just feels good. We talked about religion, told him I was a pastor, blah, blah, blah. And he said, it just feels good to be able to go to church and confess my sins to, to, to the Father. <laughs> and I couldn't help. I had to hold him my lap so hard. I said, which father? And he gave the, fa the father's name. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I meant like the father at the church or your father in heaven. And he said, well, I can't confess my sins to him. I go to the Father and he does them for me. I said, not if you're saved. He said, what do you mean saved? I said, born again. I said, Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter three, ye must be born again. And Nicodemus, who was a religious man, said to, said to Jesus, how can a man be born again? How can a man, when he is old, go into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that or born of the water is water, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. You have to be born of the spirit. And I talked to this guy on the phone, and he told me, he said, and he's old enough to be my father, and he told me, he said, I've never heard these things in my life. I've never heard these things in my life. And I was able to share the gospel with him. He had to take another call. But I've called for insurance, which I'm not buying, several times now. I care less about the insurance. And I, by the way, I would buy the insurance if they got the guy saved. I'd do it. Uh, if, I knew, if I knew the guy would get saved, I'd buy the insurance. Not saying, hey, I'll buy your insurance if you get saved. I'm not saying that as a bribe. But I'm saying I would do anything it takes to lead that guy to the Lord. But what I'm talking about is faith today. We have today a throwaway faith. And a much of my generation, which I, and I hate saying this, but I am in the group that is called millennial. I'm like right on the edge, like at the door, th at the threshold of, um, I think Generation X, which is my sister Teresa and Ben. Sarah, are you Generation X or, Z or, or millennial? Okay, so we're on the threshold, Generation X. Okay, yeah, right on the edge. I'm like, doggone it. So we're right on the edge. So I'm a millennial. And much of the millennial age, and I'm not throwing them under the bus for eating Tide Pods, even though I think that's Generation Z or something, I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, whatever the case may be, it's just that a lot of folks have been so turned off by religion and turned off by the Bible and turned off by do's and don'ts and pomp and certain, and now it's all rock band show and everybody rock out for Jesus and laser lights and fog machines and let's all get together and, you know, hoop and holler and wave our hands in the air like we don't care for Jesus. Um, I'm not into that. I'm sticking by the old book, the old paths, the old ways because they're the right ways. Uh, but um, uh, old time religion. Uh, but they've been just kind of fed up with it, disgusted by it. Just not that they'd get out there and be critical of it, but they just don't care. I'm not out there to convince them with my words as much as I am 
The Bible says, Let, lift Jesus up. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, men shall be drawn unto me. So I want to find the God of this book, the Jesus of this book, and lift him up. And I hope today, I hope today that through this, this message on faith, the throwaway type of faith, you won't throw it away. I know some people in this room right now, you're, fa you're like, my faith I don't even know what it is. It's like it's in shambles. It's shattered. It's in crumbs. And I'm holding a remnant of my faith, but it's, I don't even recognize it anymore. I'm hoping today that you may be able to put it back together. Now, you can't live a quality Christian life without faith. You just, you just can't do it. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. What I want to do is, is I want to read Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. And then we're going to jump over to verse number 32. I'm going to give you a, a quick rundown of the chapter. And we're going to read through the end of the chapter. So verse number one, the Bible says, Now faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, jump over to verse number 32. Now, between verse number one and verse number 32, it talks about what faith is. In verse number three, it finishes it off. And then it talks about Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and Joshua and Rahab. And then it talks about many others. And it talks about their faith, how they acted on their faith and how they followed through on their faith and how God followed through on their faith with his promise. Verse number 32, the Bible says, what shall I say more? What shall more I, excuse me, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, uh, <coughs> excuse me, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, Yea, moreover, of bonds and of imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, there's a couple different directions I could go with this message this morning, but I've, I've chosen one particular one, and that one is a faith that doesn't quit. Heavenly Father, bless this time. Lord, there may be somebody in the room this morning or somebody's a family a child, a mother, a single mother, a father, um, a grandparent. Lord, no matter the circumstance, you see the heart, you know the motives. Lord, I'd ask that you'd bless us this morning. Help us to get a grip on this thing called faith. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Now, not only do we need to possess faith, but the kind of faith that gets you through is when you let faith possess you. Not just, and, and I, I've said this, I kind of bragged on it uh, in Sunday school, in our Sunday school class for quite some time. I said, man, I, I just got this, I, I don't have a lot of talent. I don't have a lot of ability. I can't, there's a whole lot of things that I can't do. But I have faith. <laughs> Brother Call, I have faith, I said. And then guess what happened? My faith got tried. Oh boy, did it get tried. Things that it's, it's like the burners got turned up. It's like Nebuchadnezzar heated up the furnace. Oh, yeah, you have faith. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you have faith. Well, what if we throw you into that fire? I like them boys. They said, We're still not gonna bow. You can throw us in, but we're not gonna bow. Our God will save us. And even if he doesn't save us, we ain't bowing. 
Well, yeah, you'll be in the fire, Shadrach. You can't bow. We're not bowing. Our spirit will not bow to you. And when trials and temptations and tribulations come along, got to just mount up with that same old faith that old Shadrach, brother Shadrach, brother Meshach, and brother Abednego had that they learned and brought and got from brother Daniel and say, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved just like the tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. A lot of people say, oh, I won't be moved on these carnal things. Well, I'm, I'm blessed God, I'm a Republican, and I shall not be moved. Yeah, but you move on your convictions all the time. Bless God, I'm a Democrat, and I shall not be moved. Just move to California, and we'll all be happy. No, we'll, um, we'll uh, 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 and bless God, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not parking on the politics. I'm not doing it. Uh, but um, uh, uh, I'm talking about faith this morning. And I will say this is the, about as political as I'm going to get today. Don't have faith in your politicians. Have faith in the one who places the politicians. He raises them up and brings them down. He sets them in order. His will be done. Not only we, do we need to possess faith, we need a faith that possesses us. Now, what happens, what happens when it seems as though your faith isn't working? What happens when you hold out and you hold out and you hold out and you start to give in, you start to revert back, you start to go back and you kind of give up on your faith? Folks, I will tell you, sometimes we pray for specific things and just the opposite happens. Anybody ever had car trouble? <laughs> Driving, dear Lord, please just let me make it to where I need to go. And then you don't make it. Did the Lord not hear your prayer? Sure he did. Well, then why didn't he answer? <laughs> right? Right? Dear Lord, please don't let this be the outcome. Heavenly Father, please keep this away. Folks, we have to understand. Um, even having that faith is a good start. But, and that's an immature faith. And I don't mean you're immature. I mean, it's immature. The, Paul says you're babes in Christ. When you get saved, you're a baby in Christ. And what does a baby need? Milk. Milk. You have to have that milk faith. But as you grow, the Bible says, grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and grow in grace. Grow. But we're supposed to grow. For our little deacon to stay five months old would be really weird. It bankrupt me because he diapers, milk, and baby stuff. It's not normal for a baby to stay a baby. So why is it normal for a Christian who's been saved for 10 and 15 and 20 years to still have baby milk? It's not, it's not right. For a Christian who's been saved for, and it doesn't even take a decade, not if you're reading your Bible and praying and going to church faithfully and turning into a servant for the Lord, but a faith that says, man, I have faith. I'm a, this is a whole out faith, but I'm kind of, I kind of don't know what to do anymore. I, I don't know what to do anymore. Um, as, as the famous, just famous words of my mother when we would ride with her were, shut up and hold on. Uh, that's just faith. Faith, actually, that's my dad now driving with him. Uh, but um, uh, what happens when our faith doesn't work? Like I said, you pray for specific things and just the opposite happens. You tried to believe, you tried to trust, and yet your faith didn't work. Folks, uh, times come. The Bible, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, or not Song of Solomon, um, uh, Song of Solomon, uh, Lamentations, Ezekiel. Um, uh, a time for every purpose. A time for every season. There's a time for everything. But sometimes we pray, and it doesn't work. Sometimes we're, well, not sometimes, most times we're faithful, and it doesn't work. Most times, man, we do what we're supposed to, and we're on time, and, and, and we're, we're there, and we're dependable, and man, we're, we're trustworthy and steadfast, and all of a sudden, we're hit with these calamities in life, and we say, what, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? So what do we do? We go into our prayer closet. 
We go to the pastor for counsel. We go to some of the elders in the church for counsel. And we say, what do I do? And how should I go? And, and we pray about it. And, we, and, and if you, you use logic about it and you think about it and you do pros and cons lists and you troubleshoot and you say, okay, this could be and that could be. So I, I'm, I'm cautious in decisions that I make. Not all of them. I'm reckless in most, but cautious in, in many others. Um, but time, times come when the answer does not come. You're past the time of needing your answer. That's a problem, folks. We give God a deadline. Say, God, this is your deadline to meet my need. And if you do not meet my need, I will what? God's going to say, what, quit? Oh, that's a new one. Haven't heard that one before. And God's not being sarcastic. But he's, revert back to all the people who have quit. Revert. You know, I, I, it brings me of that story where Jesus was in the garden praying and he said, Father, not my will, not my will. Three times he prayed that prayer. Not my will, Father, not my will to be bruised, not my will to be beaten, not my will to have my beard ripped out of my face, not my will to be beaten with a cat of nine tails and have my body ripped apart, not my will to have spikes driven through my hands and my feet, not my will to be mocked and showed my nakedness, not my will to have all my, my friends run from me, not my will to have people mock me, not my will to have the heathen who aren't even my Jewish brethren mock me and, 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 and jeer me and buffet me in my face and spit upon me. Not my will. But nevertheless, not my will. Thy will be done. So I'm glad he didn't quit. I'm glad he didn't quit. And when I feel like quitting, which is every Monday morning, when I feel like quitting, I try to remember Jesus. Now, I'm not Jesus, but I can try. I can try. And you know what happens if you try? You get a whole lot closer than the people who don't try. And I love what Lee Robertson said. And he, I'm sure he got it from somebody else, but he wrote a book. Um, and it's, and there's a, uh, the cover on it says, a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. A winner never quits and a quitter never wins. That's one, I, I won't quit. I will fail a million times, but I won't quit. I won't quit. If I know what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm not quitting. I will try and 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 try all over again. It drives me insane. These engineers who put up buildings and then say, yeah, put a 70 foot vehicle tractor trailer there. I'm like, are you a moron? Yeah, we gave you three inches to spare in the front of your truck. But guess what? I've got to put that truck there. Why? Because the product needs delivered. So what do I do? I put the truck there. And I'll take over and over. Now it doesn't take, I'm, I'm a pretty good driver. Uh, but um, uh, <laughs> as my dad says, you're a professional driver. I'm better than you, sucker. Uh, but um, uh, uh, over and over and over and over again, you don't quit. 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 You don't stink and quit. Oh, sorry. I said stinking. I'm not going to stop trying to say, I'm, I'm not going to stop trying to stop, say, stinking. Not going to quit. I got it from my dad. Uh, I, I don't quit. This is just for emphasis. Don't, don't quit. There's no, no reason. The top 10 list of quitting is no reason at all. Don't quit. So what do you do when, you face, when, it, when, when what you prayed for doesn't come through? Don't quit. Hebrews 11. Now, what we read... Last I checked, nobody here today is going through what these people in Hebrews chapter 11 went through. Now, you may be going through some form of your own type of persecution or punishment or um, a ridicule because maybe your family knows or maybe your whole family's been bona fide, diehard Catholic and you turn into a Baptist and they excommunicated you from your home or maybe you were Amish or whatever. Who knows? Who I don't know. I don't know what your journey is. Like Pastor Jackson said last week, you got to run your race. But bless God, run your race and don't you quit and don't you fail and don't you stop. Just keep going. So you, uh, you may be going through some sort of form 
of trial. Each and every single one of us are because that's what's being written here. But a lot of these people, Hebrews 11 was written because there were some who were already ready to throw in the towel. Throw in the towel. Just quit. Just, 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 just stop the punishment. Just stop the punishment. They were ready to throw in the towel. Uh, they'd been uh, serving the Lord through great persecution. Um, uh, they served many Christians under uh, King Nero. Nero was a brutal, brutal, brutal emperor of Rome. Wicked, wicked king. Some folks that he was the Antichrist of his day. They thought this man is the Antichrist. They'd been serving the Lord. Folks, what we need to do, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, it says here just across the page, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. What do you need to do? What does that is? Endure, folks. Endure. The Bible says endure hardness like a good or as a good soldier. Endure hardness. You know, sometimes the things in your life that seem hard are for your good. You go to the doctor and he's got a poke and prod and pinch and scratch and cut. What is that for? It's for your good. Thank goodness for anesthetic. They put you underneath, amen. But you wake up hurting. Once that, man, I had uh, that shoulder surgery a couple, just two years back, and they said when the pain block wears off, you're in for it. Thank you, Doc. Encouragement. And when that pain block wore off, oh, my goodness gracious. I, it, was in, it was intense. It was intense. Um. And some of you have had the same, same experience lately. But what did the doctor do? He took something that was torn up and he fixed it. He had to cause pain to fix something that was broken. Fix something that was broken. Many of you have turned wrenches and busted your knuckles on your own stuff. Why? To fix the vehicle that was broken. Sometimes you got to go through hardness. Why? For the right outcome. Go through hardness for the right outcome. And anything that is worth having is sometimes going to be hard to have. It'll make you want to throw it away sometimes. Raising kids is hard, but if you'll do it in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, going to church three times a week and doing Bible studies and all that stuff is hard. But man, when I get into it, it's one of the greatest things I love doing. I love getting in the Bible. I love reading. I love man, walking with God. But folks, what are you willing to endure? Are you willing to go through it and go over it again and again and again and again to say, because he's worthy, because he's worth it, because I'm not throwing in my faith. Folks, just decide today to build your house on the rock. Let everybody else decide to build their house on the sand and the storm still comes. It's the same storm that hits the house on the rock. It's the same storm that hits the one that's on the sand, but only one of them's left standing. Where'd you build your house? Build it on the rock. Some escaped, the Bible says in verse 32 through 38, some, uh, 39, some of these folks escaped by faith. By faith they escaped. And some endured by faith. Some Christians, they have faith in good times, but let bad times come and they quit. That's an immature faith. It's a superstitious faith. Like, um, uh, I don't, here we go. We'll just pretend that this is a bottle. Jesus in a bottle. And you got to rub it. Here we go. Here's one better. That if you open it, when the pastor says open it, that something special is coming. That if you open it and go, well, I read my Bible today. Why didn't the sky split open and Jesus open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing? Oh, the one time you opened it that month. <laughs> Christianity is not measured in days or weeks. It's measured in decades. You just keep at it. You decide you are going to stay faithful. But I need, to, I, I need to, to hurry here. Some Christians have faith in good times. I have faith in good times. You have faith in good times. But when bad times come, that's when your faith is tested. A lot of folks quit. Don't quit. Don't have a superstitious faith. Have a faith that says, nah, I know what this is all about. I've been here before. I've been here before. So mature faith believes in a supernatural God. Mature faith believes in the supernatural power of God. So, folks, if God does not do it, it does not mean he cannot do it. Everybody agree with that? 
If God does not do it, it does not mean he cannot do it. He is God, correct? He can do it all. Is that Jack? Jack, my man, have a seat in the back. Don't have a heart attack. It rhymed. Man, you showed up as a man of his word right there. Anyway, okay, so faith, faith, faith. If God does not do it, it does not mean he cannot do it. Of course he can. He's sovereign God. He said, let there be, and there was. Let there be, and there was. I prayed this morning. I just expressed in Sunday school class, sometimes I run myself in circles in prayer. And I said, uh, and I, I was praying a certain prayer request, and I said, dear Lord, uh, blah, 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 and I prayed my request, and, and I said, oh, wait, well, you can't do that, you know, I'm dispensation of time because you don't do miracles like you do miracles. And I started going, oh, wait a second, just, Jackson, shut your mouth and just put your petition before the Lord and leave it alone. Let the Lord work out the details. Let him take his time. Let him do his will. But let your petitions be made known unto God. God hears us. The only way and the only reasons God does not hear us, it is, it is very clearly written in his word. He says, I will not hear you if you will not hear me. Now that I put that in Jake Jackson terms, but the, the, uh, I believe the one particular Bible verse is in Proverbs. He says, he that turneth away his ear from hearing my word, even his prayer shall be an abomination unto me. Yikes. Here's the other one. If, he, if I regard iniquity, David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not hear me. That's why I try to stay confessed. Confessed, 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 confessed. I like David. He said, Lord, forgive me of the things that I, I know that I do wrong and others know that I do wrong. Forgive me of the things that only I know I do wrong. And then more than that, forgive me of secret faults, one that I don't even know that I do. Forgive me of those. God, forgive me, cleanse me, keep me clean, Heavenly Father. I want to stay right with God, nothing between my soul and the Savior. Why? So I can let my faith grow. Any of you who have gardens, flower gardens or vegetable gardens, what do you got to go out there and do? You got to take care of business. You can't let invasive bugs get in there. You can't let weeds get up in there. You got to go in there and you've got to take care of business. And when we let sin grow and we let indifference grow and we let apathy grow and we let, um, uh, uh, we feed that carnal nature, just like that, excuse me, Indian fellow said, who a man had asked him, sir, uh, uh, he said, I, I got a war inside of me. He said, uh, two dogs inside of me, a white one and a, uh, a good one and a bad one, or a white one and a black one, or that's, don't say that because that's racist. I don't know, man. That's, uh, but uh, I have a good dog and a, you know, a white dog and a black dog. Right here, here, so we keep it, because um, I know this is going on social media, and I won't, somebody, I know Miss Arlenthia won't, she knows what I'm saying, but you know, any old kind of woke folk out there. Um, uh, I have a blue dog and a red dog. You know what? That's Crips and Bloods. Can't do that either. Uh, Y'all get what I'm saying. Uh, I have these two dogs inside of me and they war, right? They war. And the man, he said, well, which one wins the most? And he said, the one I feed the most. The one I feed the most. Obviously. Folks, I can feed my biceps or I can feed my stomach. It's obvious which one I feed the most. No. Uh, <laughs> you're like, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's obvious. It's obvious which one you feed the most is which one wins the most. Well, folks, your faith cannot grow if you're not feeding it. You have to feed it. It has to be fed. Feed it. Uh, they, uh, Paul said, I buffet my body daily, didn't he? Oh, it was buffet my body daily, amen. Um, uh, but uh, uh, what is mature faith? Mature faith, every Christian in here would say, man, I want mature faith. I want to be able to say, man, there's a storm coming, but I'm, I'm cool. I'm all right with it. Yeah, I'm getting a little seasick. Yeah, I'm getting a little, eh, this is getting tiring, but I'm cool with it because I know who's in charge because I know who I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And I ain't scared, as they would say. I ain't scared. I'm not afraid. I'm not terrified. I've got a little bit of fear, but each and every single day that the boat don't sink, I've got more trust in my Savior. I've got more trust in my Lord. You know what they did? They told Daniel, don't you pray, Daniel. Don't you pray or we'll throw you in the lion's den. Guess what he did? Not only am I praying, but I'm going to open my windows and let y'all see that I'm praying like I usually do. What did they do, Brother Alex? They threw him in the lion's den. What did God do? Shut the mouths of the lion. 
Huh. Folks, I'm not talking about God's going to deliver you out of all your trials all the time. Hebrews chapter 11 is proof that he doesn't always deliver you from your trials. But we do know Romans 8, 28 says all things, all things, all, all, all. Get that, get that. Say it with me, say it. All things. All things work together for good. Not your good. His. All things work together for the good. What good? His good. His will. His sovereign, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere will. Who are we to say, God, you, you can't, nobody, not one person in this room can take your old stinking finger. Ah. Did it again. Take your old finger and point it in the face of God and be accusatory toward God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than the strength of men. God, I just quoted it this morning to Deacon during devotions. Uh, Jeremiah 9, 23 uh, and 24. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, nor the mighty man glory in his might, nor the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glorieth in this, that he knoweth and understandeth the Lord, that he knoweth, get that, you, you little, not you little peons, me little peon, peon Jake Jackson, and, 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 and uh, the peons of the world can know, and not only know, but understand God Almighty in the way that he has said, hey, this is who I am. I will magnify my word above my name. And he has given it to us. And we let it collect dust. Man, I, I, I know that he's, um, uh, I know Brother Call is, I just met you, but he opened up his Bible, and I've never seen a Bible that marked up in my life. That, folks, you're sitting among somebody who I think knows he might know his Bible. I mean, as much as that thing is underlined and highlighted and, and it didn't look like he was coloring in it. It looked like he was studying it. That's it. That's. How do you get to be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90? Still holding on to Jesus. Not by developing religion, but by developing relationship. And you can't have that relationship. If you have this itty bitty baby, suck my thumb, wear my diaper, give me my binky, give me my burp rag, give me my favorite blankie type of faith. And I'm not trying to be mean. I, I, folks, I'm seriously not trying to be mean. But it's not a, it's, uh, what did Lester roll off? Where's Brother Lester roll off? Right there. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight, it's not a game. So run if you want to and run if you will. But I came here to stay. Amen. Well, did you come here to stay or not? You cannot, bless God, you can't stand up in church and say, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus as long as times are only good. That's what most of that, we should, we should revise, just like public schools are doing to their history books, we should revise our books, Right? Common Core Math and Revisionist History uh, uh, songs. Uh, I have this. Uh, no, it's no turning back. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. I don't care who's in the White House. I care who's on the throne. He's still on the throne, and he's not descending from it. He's on the throne forever. So what is faith? This superstitious faith? What do you have this morning? Stuper, super, superstitious? Superstitious faith or mature faith? Do you believe in the supernatural power of God? I always tell God he can. God, I know you can. I know you can. I know you can. Who can do? Who can do? Who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord and Master. I know that God can do it. I know that he could, he could save Daniel. I know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when Nebuchadnezzar told them to bow to that pagan idol, they said, nah, not happening, homie. We ain't doing it. We're not doing it. We'll pass. Hard pass on that, King Nebuchadnezzar. He said, I'll throw you into the furnace. Let's do it. Kind of chilly out here anyway. Throw us in. And guess what? Man, he threw him in and he said he looked down the furnace and said, whoa, did not we throw three into the furnace? Yea, four. I see four. And the fourth is like the son of God. Hey. Man, come on now. 
That's my God. That's my God. Folks, church isn't just some, caught myself. Church isn't just some hype time. It's not time for me to pump you up. It's not time to make you feel good to get more money. We're going to take a second offering, come up here and play something jovial. Hang all that. Life is real and life is earnest. In the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art to dust returnest was not spoken of the soul. I'm not just here to suck wind and die and say, get my yayas out. And he who dies with the most toys wins. Hang that mess. God put me here. I've got a purpose in this world. I want to find out what that purpose is. I want to do it with all my heart. And then I want to stand before my God one day and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. It's not a competition between you and me, not between you and you, not between him and her or them and those and keep up with the Joneses, but against it's, it's against me. I'll run my race with patience. I am my greatest enemy, and yet I am my greatest friend as long as I have my Savior. Hey, I can do anything, anything the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Take all those Bibles and throw them in a the fire. They say, I can do all things through him. Who? Who am I just supposed to guess? Am I just supposed to hope? Am I just supposed to go, oh, I think they're talking about the Lord there. No, I can do all things through Christ. Name the name of Christ. What kind of Bible takes out the name of Christ? I can do all things of Christ, which strengthens me. Man, I could go on and on and on. The Bible says here in Hebrews, it says, what more shall I say? Time would fail me, he said, if I were to speak of all those who had faith. And God delivered them in one way or another. And you say, but what about all the people who died? Folks, there's no greater de deliverance than heaven. And I'm not just saying that. Now, look, I'm, folks, I'm not looking to die today. I'm not looking out going, hey, Lord, take me home. No, I've got a wife. I've got kids. I have a church that I love. I have people that I want to see saved. I have uh, things that I want to do in life. Not necessarily a bucket list, but... I love life. The Bible says love life and see good days. And I'm trying to do that. I'm attempting to do that. I want to live life and I want to bring glory to my father. Hey man, there, there are less and less and less saved people and less and less and less righteous people and less and less and less people of conviction and less and less and less people that live with a, with a, with a code. And li listen, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm nobody special, but I like what David said. David said, Lord, if you kill me, who's going to praise you? Lord, can my blood sing praises to you from the ground? Hey, David, you ever heard of Abel? Yeah, it can. Uh, but, uh, uh, hey, man, the blood cried to the Lord from the ground of Abel. Amen. Uh, but of course it can. Of course it can. Man, the Bible says that um, uh, uh, the Lord could raise up rocks to bring up, uh, uh, to sing praises and to bring up a new generation if he wanted it to. God can do anything. However, David was saying, Lord, I make myself valuable to you by loving you, by walking with you, by living by your word, by doing what's right, by having faith. And I like Job. Job said, accuse me, say what you want, do what you want. I don't care because I don't have to answer to you. I have to answer to him. There's no good reason to quit. There's no good reason to quit. And I'm not going to stand up here and say it can't get so hard because a lot of you in this room have it harder than I do in many different ways. You live with things. You live with regrets. You live with do-overs. You live with things currently on your plate that you say, oh, man, I never should have, or I never could have, or, man, I let go of, or, man, I shouldn't have. And I listen, no, get rid of that should have, could have, would have lifestyle. Let it go. Live today and live for the future, knowing the Lord Jesus Christ loves you, knowing that God loves you, knowing that he's coming back for you again one day, knowing that he calls you beloved, knowing that you're written in the palm of his hands, knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, never to be blotted out, amen, and knowing with a surety that you're going to heaven when you're dying. Stop living with regret and live starting where you are. If you've had weak faith, if you came in here with weak faith, walk out here looking for stronger faith. If you walked in with weak faith, get up here when the altar starts and say, dear God in heaven, I'm a little baby Christian. I've been saved for 15 years. I've been saved for 30 years. And I can quote you all kinds of Bible verses. And Lord, I've, I've, I've taught a Sunday school. Lord, I've done all kinds of things. But Lord, my faith is weak. It's been strong. But Lord, it's weak now. And I feel beat down. I feel worn out. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with veteran Christians. Christians who are my Christian elders. Ones who raised me up and brought me up. Who I had to encourage. Because their faith was weak. By the way, your pastor sometimes gets weak faith also. But this is the neat thing, and I need to bring it down. 
Miss Jennifer, dropping the landing gear right now, calling into the tower. I'm bringing it in for a landing. Thank you for flying TRBC Airlines. <laughs> when I am weak, then I am strong. But how does that make, what? When I'm weak, when I'm weak, oh God, I'm weak. Dear God, I don't know if I can go on anymore. And I've said that a thousand times. And yet, <laughs> this is a terrible reference. As Elton John said, I'm still standing. How do you do that? How have you went to the Lord in prayer and said, Lord, I'm pulling my hair out. I'm going to quit. <laughs> and then tomorrow you said the same thing over and over and over and over again. Doesn't it dawn on you that you're still saying, I'm going to quit and you haven't quit? Is that just, what's that all about? That's called the grace of God, that he gave you strength for today. Why would he give you strength for next week when you don't, you're not at next week? You are at today. Give me strength for today. Give me what I need for today. Um, in conclusion, I'm, I'm, I, oh, goodness gracious, I preached a quarter of my notes. Miss Jennifer, please come. Uh, a lot of things have been happening. A lot of things, uh, work and job and moving and family and new baby and, and sickness and uh, uh, all the different hats that I had to do. And I felt like, man, God Almighty, this is not what I had planned. This is the way that I had. This, this is, Lord, this is my plan. Sometimes I do that in prayer. I, Dear Lord, Da, 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 da. Heavenly Father, here's my proposal. <laughs> what do they say? You'd think I'd learn by now. What do they say? I'll, 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 I'll start it, you finish it. Man plans and God laughs. He doesn't, not in a mocking way, but it just in a you silly kid. I imagine my plans look sort of like Hudson's drawing, my second youngest, when he walks up and he says, Dad, here. And I'm like, oh, what is it? <laughs> he says, this is you, and this is me, and this is mommy, and this is Chuck, our dog. And I'm like, oh, kid, okay, well, Chuck's actually over there in a bag in an urn. Uh, so if you want to hold Chuck, here he is. Uh, make him feel better, you know? Uh, but... um. I kind of think that's maybe when I go up to God and I'm like, hey, God, here's my plans. And he's like, oh, thank you, Jake. What is it? <laughs> what, what, what do you say, Brother Jake? That's silly. What do you mean? The Bible says that we're supposed to have a childlike faith. And you're like, Brother Jake, you just told us we're supposed to grow up. No, a childlike faith in my daddy can do anything. Amen. Folks, do you still believe your dad, your heavenly father can do anything? Do you believe he has your best outcome in, 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 in mind? He does. She just played it. His eye is on the sparrow, for I know he watches me. Do you really believe that? If you really believe that, then don't you ever, 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 ever quit. Would you bow your head and close your eyes, please? What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. I want you to stand to your feet, Miss Jennifer, in just a moment, just a second. When she begins to play, I want you, if you've been faltering faith, if you, man, it's being tested and tried, I want you to come forward. Talk to the Lord today, Miss Jennifer.
business. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. You can remain standing. We'll have uh, Miss Sarah come sing us. I almost said Brother Kevin, but y'all wouldn't know what I meant. Uh, one second. Brother, Brother uh, Dan? Brother Dan. Yes, sir. What's, what's up? Uh, Jack is the self-described crusader. Hey, amen. Give Jack a hand. Amen, Jack. Yeah, Jack. Now, hey, can I, can I share with you? I met Jack uh, on Friday here at the Marathon Gas Station from Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, yeah, apparently you had been walking and your feet hurt, so you kicked your shoes off. And uh, he had a big old thing of strawberries and uh, a Pepsi, a can of Pepsi sitting there, and, which I think somebody gave to you, the Pepsi. And I walked out, walking in immediately, okay, Jack, there's a, thing, there's a couple guys in the Bible named Paul and Silas. And there was a guy, a crippled guy. Um, laying at the, the, the uh, entrance of the synagogue temple and asking alms for the poor. He, could, he, he had no help. And Paul said to him, uh, silver and gold have I none. I don't have any. But what I do have, such as I have, give I thee. Just so happened that I had a gospel track and a $5 bill. So I give you a little bit of both. And I could tell. And I told you sitting there, man, I've invited 100 people to church and they don't come. And here you are. Uh, number one, Jack's a man of his word. Uh, and Jack, you will find also that God is also a man of his word. Jack, God will never leave you, never forsake you. What I told you, it's not about religion. It's relationship. So Jack, what you just did, if you believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. It doesn't say thou shalt and stop drinking, thou shalt and stop moking, thou, thou, thou shalt and stop gambling. It says thou shalt be saved. Right where you are, right how you are, right when you are, just like you are, Jack. God will never leave you. All right? Jack, I'm so glad you came. Let's give Jack one more big hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Jack. All right, all right, Miss Sarah, come and sing us out, man.